Happy Monday, everybody. Yo! Well, as I was saying, my shaman told me it was normal for the demons to appear when mm. you do that journey. So, just <laughs> don't worry. You're going to throw up all you want, and yeah. then you'll get it out. As long yeah. as you bring some salted holy water with you, you'll be good. Mm. Gotta exactly. make pre-salt it to save time. Hello, everybody. We'll do the weird thing. Always pre-salt your holy water. That's a that's a tip. Pre pre holy it, holy it up. It brings the holy out. A Double a hey, measure ho holy twice. By the way, salt once. Good news. I put a drop of holy water in the ocean, which means per the tenets of homeopathy, it's the holiest water imaginable. Damn. Hmm. Damn. You, you you just don't understand, yeah, Brian. That I, it's it's. It's you gotta shake it in the right directions. Like a Polaroid picture. Yeah. You know, the up up down versus side to side. It's very important. I, well, like little like I went when I worked with Randy, like you'd hear all of these things. You'd ask, like, well, what about this? And you, and one you'd get like people who believe crazy things often. They never ask if this is true, what else? Yeah. And you go, like, well, what if you did this? And you'd be like, Well, I, I never thought of I'll have to go ask the idiot that told me this and yeah. find out what they tell me. And <laughs> Yeah, not not really a, a branching logic tree to some of that stuff. No. Yeah. Well, you know what is a branching logic tree? A branching tree? logic tree is the podcast we're about to do. Everybody, yeah. everybody yeah. wants to start the podcast? Let's branch out. All right, Andrew, I'll count you in. Let's start the Weird Things Podcast in three, two. Hello, and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Mean, joined by Justin Robert Young. Hello. Mr. Brian Brushwood. Oh, it's a growl off, I see. Oh, Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hello. Oh, jeez. Ah. Oh, my God. Wow. That's, <laughs> I, I don't like that at all. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a bad growl just, off, <laughs> not a burp off. Yeah, that was... <laughs> we might have to... <laughs> rap, print, Shit, we got that. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Doc, everybody, Doc. Ah! Uh, yeah, so uh, exciting day for people on board the International Space Station. Uh, they got a little alert like, hey, guys, um, there's uh, might be some space junk coming towards you. Um, so... Uh, Basically, what happened is they had to have the crew go into like the different uh, space capsules, the Crew Dragon and this the Russian capsule, because of the risk of this. Now, this is what's crazy is we don't know. We don't know if it's because the Soviets did an anti-satellite test and blew up a satellite shortly before. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Also, the, the who? The who? Oh, the Soviets, sorry. <laughs> so, I mean, oh, you didn't get that. He didn't get the memo. And they're back. Um, I mean, I mean, they uh, time traveled from the past. Yeah, I, 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 so, I, I, I didn't know if, if this was an old thing or, 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 or I, I, I wanted to get. All right, so the Russians, the Russians blew up yeah, an anti-satellite. So all, I will explain why I'm an idiot whenever I say that because so much of the so many of the rockets and stuff they did were all like Soviet rockets, Soviet era rockets gotcha. and yeah. stuff because it's like it's like oh the Russian space watch which was really the Soviet, but anyhow, but. Yes, the Russians, um, the Russians had did an anti-satellite test and blew up a satellite to test. Yes, it blew up, but they don't know if it was that debris or the debris from when the Chinese did a test a year ago. So right now there's this confusion. They're like, "Oh no, it's 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 the Russian satellite." No, no, it's the Chinese. So Eric Berger, who's uh, covering this for Ars Technica, he's a great resource, um, which is updated. So let's check the updated. Um, if you want to do that, Bryce, we'll see which which is it. Uh, during a daily briefing on the U.S. State Department spokesperson, Ned Price said the test had created more than 1,500 pieces of trackable debris and hundreds of thousands of pieces of untrackable debris. Quote, the Russian Federation recklessly conducted a destructive satellite test of a direct ascent anti-satellite missile against one of its own satellites. It's like they don't like the space station. It's like they're, uh, <laughs> they're it's a timeshare. Yeah. They really want to get out of. Yeah. And so they've tried to like spin it with their thrusters and now they're trying to destroy it. They're trying to, to break their lease with space <laughs> yeah. by playing loud music at all hours. Uh, that, that might be worth discussing. Um, I, I know a very few projects to clean up uh, uh the space lanes um and in fact i i 
reluctantly admit that the only good idea that I still hold on to was from uh, one of the last uh, uh, issues of 321 Contact magazine, where they talked about sending up a rocket and having it explode into just, you know, a couple of miles wide foam ball that would basically anything pegging it would slow down enough that it would fall out of the sky. I, I don't think I've heard any better ideas since then to eliminate space junk. Yeah. Or at least yeah. to, to clear some lanes yeah. to, to clear places that, that, that we want they, to go. There's actually uh, a couple startups. Um, there's uh, was it clear space one. Uh, if you go to clear space dot today, which is they, they have like a crazy sort of, uh, you know, like literally like grabbers and stuff. They want to do this. There's the idea of using like you I mean, like like a smaller sort of thing like air gels. So it is actually an active astro scale is another group that's looking into doing this. Um, so that is becoming you know the problem is is like who has to pay for it. But right. as we see today, like uh, you know the fact that the International Space Station had to take these you know maneuvers. Yeah, and I could see I could see like. Hey, listen, uh, if you go do an anti-satellite test up there and you explode it and we go clean it up, we're going to send you a bill. You know what? It almost makes me wonder, and uh, this this almost certainly would end up being the subject of interminable uh, uh, multinational arguments in order to get there. But there's part of me that loves the idea of, man, it's space. Just go up there, clean out a lane, charge rent. Just say, uh, not quite a protection racket, but just a, hey, um, you guys fly wherever you want to fly. Yeah. We personally guarantee that there ain't going to be no garbage. We are, we are clearing, we are clearing the way in this lane. Right. Correct. And if you plan to occupy that lane, we will send you a bill or maybe we'll, uh, uh, clean up other garbage. (laughs) Yeah. It's a real nice station you got there. It'd be a real (laughs) shame. Uh, uh, I, I do wonder whether or not there is some kind of, uh, uh, agreement in the, in, in the offing to say like, all right, well, who's responsible is it? Who's footing the bill on, on cleaning this place? So the problem is you take, uh, you take China or Russia and you would say that they, they have, they do, they have launch industries, but they're, you know, in both cases, their military sort of drives things. And if the yeah. military is like, well, it's more important that we have this defensive capabilities, we don't really care about the launch thing. It's like, I don't know what it is now, but like a few years ago in recent history, the total combined launch industry in the world was like $5 billion. That was how much money that launch providers made every year from like doing like commercial launches, Yeah, which seems a lot, but it's kind of not a lot. And so for militaries to be like, uh, like we have this, give an example, kind of the tragedy of the commons, like in Florida, where we have big sugar, which the sugar industry, and we have the cane fields, and then they use these fertilizers that they get drained out, and they go through the they go through the canals, they go out into the the waterways, they create these algae booms, which kills off fish. Commercial fishing is a much bigger industry, brings in actually more money than sugar does. Yeah, but the politics of it is, is you're left with algae blooms and this because we, you know, term we're you know very familiar with this tragedy of the commons. And so here, if the military is like, we don't care. Our job is to build these satellite weapons and technology. So, so we don't, and and not even to the point of carving out an element of our budget to to clear up the the, the spaceways. Not our job. Our job is to shoot things down. Whatever. Russians can't afford it. Uh, the Chinese, once they get more assets up there, it might become more critical for them. You know what you could do? Uh, and this is, this is blue sky projections. Um, what if, what if you essentially create a space lane and you occupy every hour of space behind it? So such that, um, that anybody who tried to, 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 carve their way into your traffic is very likely going to be hit by one of your dummy satellites. And then meanwhile, you have the codes to move the dummy satellites out of the way or whatever. You've got, you've got a posse. Yeah, basically. So, so imagine like right now uh, we would send up one craft that would follow one lane. Imagine if you just fully occupied that lane and granted only one of the craft is doing anything. The rest are like unoccupied units or 
dummy things we, to where it would be difficult. I guess, yeah. The, the, the question would You're, be, it would be have to be so cheap to get something up there that you would be willing to get something up there that wouldn't be doing nothing. Yeah. Right? The, the problem isn't like one satellite crashed into another one because your chances of that happening are like infinitesimally small. It's a debris field spreading in hundreds of kilometers of little paint chips and things like that. That's the real problem because then you have it and it's not in a stable orbit. And it changes over time. And so what happened with the International Space Station, which changed the orbit from time to time, is this elliptical orbit, or in this case, it may be the debris that was just created, you know, like, you know, or like twice per, you know, once every year or so, we have to change orbits because if something comes in the way and drifts in. So you, just having something ahead of it's not going to help the problem when it's a much bigger field and things are moving so fast. By the time this thing was there, and it's hard to predict it. Uh, yeah, I, I guess what I'm what I'm speculating is if it would be possible for any either state actor or private industry to claim essentially a, a, a space lane, a full space lane. Well, we do we do when you when you go when you want to like for SpaceX to launch its satellites, it had to get permission from like the FAA and to say, this is the orbital path we're going to do. And once you establish an orbital path, but that doesn't help you if the Russians or the Chinese blow up yeah. a satellite and it just sends fragments all across there. And that's, and that's, this is forcing us today. It's going to bring that up to say, Hey, cool. No, we have these lanes. You're not supposed to go in there and your stuff came across there. And they're like, what yeah. are you going to do, bro? What are you going to yeah. do? Or whatever that is in Russian. Yeah. Broski. <laughs> But it could be it could be getting the major space partners. I think we're probably very close to the major space partners coming together and saying, okay, like one, we need to fund a cleanup, cleanup yeah. efforts, maybe. And I think it would be a great it would be a great thing we did with like the the NASA program where we said we'll just contract somebody else to do it. The problem is is that these other the ESA, the Russians and the China the, they're not so fully into let private just pay private enterprise to do it. They still want to like no, we'll build the solution. Well, and even NASA still is like, no, we we the problem with you know SpaceX is we don't own it. We should design and own it. It's like, well, so then it, it, it would eventually be you know the the solution will be for janky state crafted things that will not work well together in trying to do something. But if you if you said, hey, we're gonna do a thing where every launch, everything that goes above, you know, every everything goes into orbit, you pay a tax. And this thing pay into a fund, and this fund goes to pay for cleanup, cleanup and we're and we're gonna hire, we're gonna contract out for cleanups. That'd be yeah, Maybe. that would be ideal, but who knows? Uh, right. And I'm sure there are conferences and stuff where like tons of people propose like every scenario I could imagine here, every situation that could entail. Well, here's the problem with this, but well, that's I mean that that is the big question because uh, when you're talking about that kind of money, that's a lot of scratch. Like like you are you are talking about big 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 cash if you would be able to be a vendor to clean up space debris. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the because right now it's like a risk thing. You can say, okay, as the cost of launch goes down, you're like, which is cheaper? Putting satellites up if you know, okay, this satellite it used to be, ah, oh, these it costs so much to put them up there. But if we get if Starship starts flying next year, which it may happen, even with Falcon Nine, it's so much cheaper to put stuff up there that you might be like, eh, if it gets destroyed, I have a backup. We put something else up there instead of paying you know five hundred billion dollars a year to clean it up. Yeah. Uh, and I, I suppose it is worth noting that uh, uh, the vast majority of debris will probably not be in a perfect orbit. It's a lot of it's going to fall and, and kind of clean some of itself up. Yeah, we still got Apollo stuff up there. I mean, we've got stuff can be in crazy orbits that can stay up there a considerable long time. And so, uh, you know, hundreds of years. Yeah. Well, you want to know what also stays up for a really long time? My excitement when people head on over to patreon.com slash weird things. Why is that, Justin? Because my cheer knows no bounds knowing that you, the listeners to this program, understand that the only way that this keeps on rolling is if you head on over to patreon.com slash weird things and support us with your money. Yeah, but I've heard that Patreon doesn't really give any money to anyone. Uh, shut up is what I would say to you because that's wrong and we don't tolerate that kind of nonsense on this program. No, it indeed gives us money. Uh, 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 don't believe me? I have money. 
Well, I just, <laughs> Moving read, on. I just read Atlas Shrugged, and I don't do anything that doesn't benefit me personally. Uh, well, it does benefit you personally. What? The ding dong. Oh. Because you can get uh, 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 early access to the After Things podcast, which talks about our lives as entrepreneurs and answers your questions in a way that will make your life better. Right on. Hey, what about lasers? If we know where this stuff is... Could we microwave laser them and, and just sort of knock them about? That's actually one of the plans was to put a laser on the ISS to do that, um, which and, and that might help with. <laughs> I love that, the, that that was a perfectly reasonable thing to say, but then I just why, heard why it from the it outside. Be? I know. Why would they watch the same shows we yeah. do, Brian? I know. I know. You know. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> it's not like one day at NASA, some guy goes, hey, guys. Have you heard about this thing called lasers? <laughs> Let me look this up. Holy cow. Like, yeah, that's that's the idea. You know, put a laser on the ISS. And Brian, as you described, because it has rocket engines, it's already basically a spaceship. Spaceship with lasers. Yeah. yeah. Checks out. Maybe, uh, maybe, and 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 I'm I'm saying this. It's going to sound like I'm making a joke. I'm I'm actually not. But like, quite literally, a BB gun, like like uh, a highly targeted BB gun, just just a you knock it knock it down knock it okay. down i will one up your bb gun and say what if it was like frozen or like nitrogen pellets or something that would then not turn into more debris to cause a problem because yeah. also your bb gun your bb gun is going to go around the earth and come back and hit you no but, but 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 in my case my bbs are made from those silver candy bbs that they put on cakes uh yeah. so so they they chip across and then they're Delicious. Well, yeah, we can, but you can make it like if you use like like I said like some frozen like CO two or yeah. something like that that'll sublimate. Yeah. Uh, the goal ice. is just to knock it into a trajectory that will burn up in the atmosphere, right? Yes. Yeah. Or or yeah. knock it out of orbit or, or yeah. just well, get, get it out off. of the lane. That's gonna be really powerful, Brian. Yeah, it will. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. As I'm, soon I'm as sorry. I, as soon as I'm completed with my mission. <laughs> <laughs> this fully oh, armed and operational space jump BB destroyer. Gun, my ice pellet uh, fire <laughs> weapon. Well, speaking of yeeting things, um, we had our first te test of the Wiley e. Coyote uh, Aerospace Company, aka Spin Launch. Uh, yeah, remember spin remind launch? Remind me of this what? one. <laughs> All right. Let's say different ways to get things into space right rocket engines yeah there's the whole there's a whole nother thing of uh electrical propulsion through like you know super light balloons that keep there's another thing that's a crazier thing than fly an airplane really, really high and then just just uh, you know use a model rocket to shoot off of that uh as we like to call virgin galactic aerospace. yeah 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 so uh but there is the other one was the idea if you have a centrifuge spin something build up to such a really high speed then let it go. It won't go orbital, but it will get you past what? the first. So they built a thing that's as tall as the the statue part of the Statue of Liberty. Oh, this and is so great! It looks like describe what you're seeing. All right, describe so this, what you're seeing. this looks like a gigantic, like almost like like a imagine a snail, right? But like the 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 the, the uh, horizontal part of the snail that comes out of the shell. You're tilting that 90 degrees upward, so so it is a big, uh, a, a big snail shell. It looks and like then a the whistle. Snail itself is is shooting is is pointed northward, and it is, I guess, just building up enough pressure that I, it, it is it's, yeeting it's a, this some bitch as high as it can. <laughs> it's a literal David versus Goliath. You're just gonna like, uh, hey man, why are we gonna waste all the chemicals to get you know from zero to real fast? Let me just whip this on up. It's a centrifuge turned on its side. It's got this projectile, which is attached to the end of this armature. It whips it up to like an incredible velocity <laughs> and it's in a vacuum chamber too. So that's why there's this, this seal on top. There's in a vacuum chamber and then the thing just rips through this. You see it smash through this diaphragm and then like go up. What I noticed here was, which was kind of curious is like we saw the video of it going up, but there was a lot of other data and I'm like, there are like cars parked near there. Yeah, stuff. right. <laughs> like, and it has to get the timing just right because when it lets go from there, I, I, I'm not gonna tell anybody, hey, don't go pursue your crazy vision. I, I am because you're still gonna need you. 
their plan is this. Their plan is they're going to build these. There'll be multiple stages. It'll be a first. It, the idea is that use this spin to get you for the first pass. So you need less fuel and you only need, let's say, you know, uh, one rocket engine to go into orbit. They're going to build their own satellites because these things have to be pretty powerful, like pretty resistant to like G forces. Although they yeah. say, they say an iPhone could survive the forces they're going to do. So they want to be kind of an end to end thing for putting things up. And you could never do a person there because you ended up as like, you know, jelly. But for hardware, you could do this. Uh, this is a they have a design. We're looking at a proposed, you know, or coastal launch site, which is one at an angle. And it's about to whisk this thing around. And then. I mean, people this, are asked. This is pretty close to uh, uh, the system in Highlands. The moon is a harsh mistress where they're doing mining. And then they just they have their mined minerals, and then they just chuck them down to Earth. And then yeah. one day they yeah. decide to go rogue, and they're all like, "Well, what if we just chucked all of it indiscriminately at Earth?" And then Earth was like, yeah. "Okay, you're free." Yeah, yeah, that was I think they were using like a mass driver with like a rail gun or something. And here, which the moon might work, and this would work on the moon in in theory because it's this would be great when we're on the moon and we need to get stuff off there this sounds really cool but on earth people like well you know we you know with reusable rockets the cost this is a thing that probably made a lot of sense 15 years ago yeah yeah before before but reusability I, became a, a realistic thing so so where is this thing landing well, you know wherever <laughs> you know, Walmart parking lot. <laughs> like because again i have a i have a yeah, it, it's not piloted or anything. I don't know how much uh, uh, control they have once they throw this some bitch into the when, air. I mean, I assume just as much as when, any guided missile. But it's like a trebuchet, right? It's aimed in one direction. All you can control is the well, speed. Uh, well, yeah, but then, but then the the engine kicks in, and then it keeps on going. It takes that momentum and builds on it. Well, yeah, I mean, but, yeah. but I don't know if that's the version that they have now. Now they're just chucking stuff, right? Well, well, but you got to yeah, start that's how somewhere, testing Justin. Works. Yeah. No, <laughs> I know. I know. I know. I, know. I, no, I just want to know where it's landing. Were, that's what I'm saying. During these tests, were, like, like, do we have any idea where this thing is oh, going to land? A test, right? Uh, you don't you remember the famous Apollo catapult? Don't you? Yeah, remember? right. That was, you know, the, the you know, uh, the, we I, hired like some Romans to build that and test uh, the early. Right. I oh, also like okay. that uh, this is shockingly close to uh, Jules Verne's uh, "From the Earth to the Moon." Just put them in a big old gun and just fire them off. So one of the things that Spin Launch had talked about too, if I remember correctly, is way back because we covered them before, was the idea of using this for like drilling or whatever else too. Because like they, what they have here too is kind of a really interesting weapon system. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. To Brian's point, like uh, if you're talking about a, a you know missile launch, uh, that would certainly be if, if it were a guided missile to throw it in, into near orbit like that that gives you a lot of opportunities to hit things yeah so i'm wondering like what did they do because like you just sort of see like yeah the system launch i don't think gave us like an altitude uh oh. the alternative rocket reached tens of thousands of feet hmm. so commercial airline space yeah Man, not bad i probably 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 you probably could have just strapped it to a plane <laughs> and flown a plane up there. Maybe if they could fly this thing up on a plane. So you fly a plane up with one of these, and then it starts whipping it up and then yeah. it throws it up. Then you kick on the so, model rocket engine. Let's well, let's embrace this idea for a moment. Yeah. So you're gonna need you need you're gonna need a, a motor stage. You're still gonna need a motor stage, but maybe you need one motor stage. In theory, less fuel, so it's cheaper, smaller. Um you could the thing that's cool about this is rapidly like the idea that once that thing's left the system you can pop another system something else in there and keep popping it uh you know and again is pointed out in the chat room like yeah this is just the prototype the bigger ones the full-sized one's going to be like three times the size of this but you could you could send if you wanted to send cubesats up like you could send them up like every five minutes yeah you know so if you have a space system i mean a, 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 an aircraft launch system if you're getting rid of those lower stages and the cost, if you want to launch smaller satellites, there's still a marginal cost, which is even like with Falcon 9, it's going to be $50 million unless you're part of somebody else's payload. 
Starship, theoretically, there's going to be limited capacity to what Starship could do. And you're going to be more constrained about availability than the actual cost itself. So, you know. So yeah, it's potential. I I I think it is an interesting idea. The the question that that I I think is is most pressing going forward to your point, Andrew, is exactly how much does the money saved on the fuel matter in a world of reusable rockets? It's uh, not so much the. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I I, I was also gonna uh, throw in the factor of uh, of uh, environmental concerns as well. Like when this thing could be theoretically solar or fusion powered or whatever, and it's like you're not burning any hydrocarbons at all. And, and you know, maybe if not to space, take something like Project Loon or whatever, like you chuck it up high enough, inflates, yeah, and uh, 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 drifts around, carries internet in a giant mesh network or something. That's an interesting idea. And, I, you know, something you mentioned earlier, Andrew, about this as a as possibly a unique launch vehicle for for say weaponry like that that could propel the 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 advancement of tech for for something like this if you know if they are really able to send like a missile with 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 less or or later propulsion that make it a little harder to detect for for at least a little bit oh yeah that's a good point like so because there's no rocket plume um oh, for stealth so yeah. You, but the thing is, you know where these systems are, though. So here's the description. The velocity boost provided by the accelerator's electric drive results in a 4x reduction in the fuel required to reach orbit and a 10x reduction in cost. That's a hard thing to quantify. And the ability to launch multiple times per day. They expect the first customer launches in 2024. So if you take a look at, like, let's say um, SpaceX with Starlink has this big, huge lead over everybody else. You know, Elon Musk realized, hey, we've got all this capacity for Falcon 9 rockets. And people are like, what are you going to use that capacity for? There's not much market. It's like, well, we'll just build our own satellite system and do internet. How about that? And people yeah. are like, oh. And then so now you have one web and you have Kuiper, which is Amazon project, which they're like, um, we need rides into space because uh, we got to put up a gazillion satellites. And so, and that's not going to be like you just put up, you know, 3,000 satellites, you're done. You're going to constantly have to maintain this. And so if I could see for, I think there is a, I think that there could be, if they can get that upper stage cheap enough, you know, even if you're saying like, well, it's $5 million for an upper stage and, you know, sorry, you never get that money back. It's not reasonable. The cost of these satellites is much, much more and that cadence. And if you're like, no, we need to get 100 of these up right now in the next six months. Yeah. I'm, I was really kind of like skeptical, but now I'm like, yeah, they've they've simplified things tremendously because they don't have to have a first stage, and first stage are complex. And well, I, th I feel like we came around on spin tech or spin launch. I'll, 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 I I think they're smart. I and I think that you know, in my head, I'm in this well. When we have Starship and fully reusable and stuff, it's like. Well, yes, I have Uber and I have DoorDash, but they sometimes I need Amazon Fresh. Yeah. Or a grocery store. And look, they got an American flag on there too. Uh, if you look at the design of the rocket too, it looks like the whole thing's just made entirely out of carbon fiber because if this thing like rips apart. <laughs> and I like this nobody at the control system. It's just completely automated there. <laughs> yeah. Uh I wonder if there's applications for like an anti missile defense system or something, because um you know, right now, you know, let's say there's an incoming missile, you press a button, you launch one. If if you could have pre-spun up several of these uh, on a defense perimeter, so it's like you, you essentially go from zero to really fast instantly because you're already going really fast in the tube. Yeah. Um, uh, that's, that's probably microseconds that don't even matter, but I don't know. Uh, I, I, I like that people are trying crazy stuff. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued. I would say when they first launched, I was sort of like a little bit. Uh, they actually on their webpage, you can see the comparison of their uh, orbital accelerator, how it's taller than the Statue of Liberty. Um, I love that metric. The I remember they talked about using these things for like drilling, and that was they mm. they did this weird sort of like I think financial offering, and they thought, oh, you can use it for drilling and all these other stuff, and I'm like. 
pick a thing, pick one, just pick one thing you want to do. Yeah. And so it looks like they did. That sounds like, uh, sounds like they just needed money in the tent so they could move in, yeah. m- move in a direction. Uh, I've, yeah. I've mentioned it before, and I've been corrected on, on you know, even I, I believe the author knows how improbable it is, but one of the neatest ideas in uh, Seven Eves by Neil Stevenson was the idea of, of these bolos that were satellites that, um, you know, had uh, uh, two heavy ends, and they would rotate end over end in orbit around the planet. So when one end dipped down, it would dip down actually temporarily into the atmosphere so hypothetically you could fly up high enough that if you timed it just right you could just like thing dips down you swoop on in you lay down and get ready for six g's and then it tumbles on up and then now now you're up in space um not that that in particular will work because that's made a book but uh but but man some kind of combination of all these crazy ideas coming together for a very low impact, very energy efficient way to get, you know, cargo. Uh, yeah. And granted, you know, an insufferable G's experienced on the way doesn't seem completely impossible. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I take myself out of the running of being the arbiter of like, what's too crazy or not. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and and here like it was funny because when we as we discussed like well what could do and then i look at their uh the the when they look at what they're looking at for and they say that like oh well uh their use case they say oh for like launching like large satellites like big you know constellations of satellites so it's like oh okay cool they, that, that that's their use case is like yeah. the one webs and companies like that they're like yeah we need to launch a gazillion of these there was this crazy program years ago. Uh, this rocket designer had tried to do, and I forget which country in Africa, um, which was to make these really stupid, dumb chemical rockets and just bundle a ton of them together. And the idea is, if you just make them like just so cheap that you just you just like if you want to make a you know a big rocket, you just put like fifty of these things. Um, let me pull up this up, like uh, crazy sort of. Uh, African it's definitely going to have the word Acme on the side somewhere. <laughs> um, yeah, you just uh, uh, place the Mentos in the Diet Coke uh, <laughs> and uh, with enough of them together. And uh, yeah, this was, I'm looking this up right now to forget the name. The, the crazy thing, that, yeah, basically it was just that idea of like just, because when the idea of like reusability was such a radical sort of idea that it's still, you know, when Elon Musk first talked about like, you know, that when he did his press conference speech, which was like 10 years ago, you know, then, you know, they did the national press conference in yeah, the, the press uh, uh, club in DC. Yeah. And, yeah. And it was, uh, you know, you're like, what? yeah. And remember when, you know, they did the first, grasshopper tests and we're looking at people like oh it looks like cg it's cg spacex is just trying to feed us this cg yeah. thing like this this is never gonna happen and then you know these people kind of kind of kind of shut up um otrag that's what i was trying to look up otrag o-t-r-a-g uh which was this big modular rocket concept um German designers and oh, built in. Yeah, this was the pro- this was kind of the problem. Like they wanted to build it in Libya. It was like partnered with Libya because Libya is like, <laughs> oh, we like this idea. You're this like, I cool. wonder why. <laughs> yeah, so that it's was a controversial Libyans. sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, and that was uh, yeah. So that idea was like, yeah, let's just mass produce these really, really big, like basically just dumb boosters and then if you want to big a bunch of stuff just tape a bunch of them together and, and you're up at the lower same stages. time oh my god yeah you know remember well, not exactly the most efficient system but no. um so a lot of ideas that was a little bit too crazy for me <laughs> so gentlemen what do you picks sure uh yeah dude my pick is i want to pick your brain on whether or not uh i i i, I know very very little about this but, but I just read a headline that I, I was like, oh, I want to talk with Andrew about this. 
um, about whether or not uh, Jeff Bezos in a vendetta against Elon Musk is going to make sure Rivian is a bigger success than Tesla. Because, like, if he can't win the space race, he might as well win the electric car race. I mean, good luck to him. If it's just as easy as willpower, then cool. <laughs> well, that uh, that and money. I mean, you know, he's uh, well, a targeted strike. Yeah, but, I mean, there's... I, I, I'm excited by the idea of Rivian being successful. Rivian, they, they just had their IPO. They're good, the media were valued bigger than like every other car company except for Tesla, whatever, because a lot of excitement there. They've got, you know, they've got, they're going to be selling a ton of vehicles to Amazon. The challenge that they face is it, it's very I'm easy, but it actually is. It's pretty easy to build a few cars, to, fill, to build a few examples. To then build a factory and a pipeline and to deliver these things reliably, particularly when you're dealing with electric cars and the components are very different and your supply chains are crazy. The product is 10% of it. The manufacturing supply chain is 90% of it. Yeah. And that's going to be a big, big, big challenge. But the people at Rivian are super capable. But, you know, Bezos threw all the money in the world at Blue Origin. And it's where are their production vehicles, right? Where are the rocket engines they were supposed to supply? Yeah. So, I mean, hey, man, they they took Kirk to space. It's a fact. Well, I mean, I, I think yeah. it's it, it's 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 fascinating. To uh, I think Rivian has a better chance at success because it's coming after Tesla, and at least you have seen the, an uh, an example of a, an American car company being launched and and you see the lessons that that they had to learn so theoretically you will have to learn less of them yourselves the hard way but uh i i I think the fact that tesla was the first successful american car company in a very 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 long time is a cautionary tale to understand exactly how how difficult it is although i think more and better uh, you know uh, competition in the ev market is great it's great for everybody. I think, I think they, and they're right now they're going after like trucks and stuff. I think that's a smart thing to not try to be go head to head. Let's say we're going to go after this market for it. We think there's a value there. I think that's really sharp. Uh, I think the trucks look good. I look at these, I think they look really good. Yeah. You know, but, uh, you know, when I sit in my Tesla, you know, the thing that I love is I love the autopilot. I love all those other little things. And so the AI systems or the, the ML in there is, is really significant. Um, we'll see. Uh, well, what is the battery tech advantage for Tesla? Like, like it seems like they get more out of their batteries than, than other EVs. Well, Lucid, which is launched, there has their first production vehicles. They actually, their sedans get way, have more mile. They get more miles. They get more than, mileage. Okay. Yeah, but we but it's I think it's just bigger battery packs. I think okay. it's just they put a bigger battery pack in there. Tesla and the thing too about Tesla, which is the, the thing that should be disconcerting to these other car manufacturers starting it. Tesla's profit margins per vehicle are insane. They're like Apple, like and they they were criticized like oh they're not making money like well because they're building factories and that's they're building they're buying zillion dollar machinery to build stuff but actually the cost per vehicle kept going down and down and tesla has a lot of elasticity in there and like the cyber truck is this crazy weird cool crazy thing but i think a lot of people like in brian i think you point out somebody gonna want to use this on a job site it's very easy for them to change like oh you want you want something that's like a space you know, a futuristic f-150 yeah we'll do that we can do that too so yeah uh well if we're looking for a content thing uh justin finally got me to start watching succession so i'm only four episodes in can't really Ooh. talk much about it because i don't know much about it but uh i'm told to buckle up how do you feel about same how do you feel you started about watching succession <gasps> yeah Took you three years to get us to do it. How yeah. do you feel about that? You won. Uh, action stations, Justin. Action stations. <laughs> uh, I'm excited for you guys to get to the end. There, 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 are, there are a few moments that I loved in season one, uh, specifically because they directly kind of, I think that the show has a very uh, a keen sense of why that world is fascinating. The, they they are never far away from showing you some element that seems beyond 
like and and uh, the conversations that are being had are are able to keep to me for me at least on the right side of parody which is part of the reason why i i it took me a while to get into it initially because especially with adam mckay whose political writing tends to be a little heavy-handed uh and is the producer on succession i was i was a little skeptical on how it would how it would do it but uh it all feels realistic. It it feels like if you just knew enough rich people, they would tell you stories about you know a, a family not unlike the Roys in 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 Succession. Yeah, I I watch it going. All right, is this the Murdochs or the Redstones when something happens? <laughs> like like which which media dynasty family is it? There's but. there's a lot a lot of blending and uh, 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 season two they wind up meeting their 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 equivalent of like if the roys are if waystar royco is effectively like a disney meets news corp kind of mega mega conglomerate or like a universal meets news corp kind of thing they they come in contact with another family that's kind of like an nbc meets pbs mm -hmm. sort of uh, <laughs> uh family but it's great uh, uh uh the show's fun and i'm excited to hear you guys get further into it Cool. Yeah, I think, you know, if you and me, if we just got together and we could work things out without the Fed, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, There's great, like, you know, straw men in there, but they're hilarious. So it, it's yeah, the 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 characters continue to just kind of uh, 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 evolve in in really, really, really fun ways. And anything else that I would say is uh, I'm just I'm going to take away joy from you guys as you as you watch through it. Oh. So. Uh, um, F off. <laughs> uh, speaking of F words, I've uh, 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 continued watching The Foundation. I am now four episodes in on Foundation. How, how do you feel about it? Uh, 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 I, I don't know if I if I need psycho history to tell me <laughs> where we're going because it sure as hell is taking long enough. Um, Man, look, I'm still rooting for it because it, there, there are elements to the Foundation story that, unlike so many other amazing sci-fi books and sci-fi stories and ideas, it hasn't really been strip-mined for everything that makes it special. Like, there are elements to Foundation that still are really, really, really cool. That being said, you know... The stuff I remember most about the Foundation books aren't even in the first book. It's in the second book. Um, the first book is something that I, I can understand when you look at it. And you're like, how in the hell do we adapt this for television and continue to maintain a cast and to maintain continuity? Um, there are decisions that they made, including keeping so much of the story on Trantor that I don't care about as much as I love Lee Pace and his Mega Man suit. Um, I, 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 if, if you're disconnected from the main story and you're not keeping me engrossed, there's so much that I'm just like, all right, well, where do we connect aside from these three actors chewing scenery at each other for, for 30 minutes an episode? Um, I don't know. Uh, 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 to me, if you're going to do a, a condensed version of foundation, uh, uh, you kind of got to wrap it around Selden. I, I would have liked to see maybe a little bit more of it leaning into a kind of like, like the master direction, like, like maybe getting into some of how much you have to subjugate yourself. If, if the man, if the, if you're in the presence of the prophet and you really believe in him, but, uh, uh, boy, so far I, it's, it's, it's hard. It's, it's thicker to get through than I wanted. I, I, like, I'm like, I'm okay with it being its own thing. I'm fine with that. I don't, I, I, I gave up. I gave up like episode five or six. Cause I'm like, oh, cool. The, the crying woman on the tr space station thing. You're doing this. You're doing, we're, we're doing this cliche thing here. We're doing this. And I just kind of, I'm like, I'm not really enjoying, I'm not having fun. And I, I'm like, I'm just going to go back and I'm going to go watch The Expanse, which is what I think this wants to be without really saying that it wants to be The Expanse. It kind of makes me wish The Expanse just ripped off the cool parts <laughs> of Foundation for a season. Or like, it, that could be a three-season arc. I mean, 
I, and then also, I don't know. For me, I just keep watching it because the Foundation is one of the coolest villains in all of sci-fi history. And I, I don't know when they're going to bring him in, but at some point they're we'll going to bring him it. in and uh, it'll be... I don't know. I'll just be upset because they won't do it cool because, like, but whatever. <laughs> I'm just, I'm kind of waiting Well, there's around. that. Yeah. Yeah, they kind of, they kind of, remember us saying they kind of deflated the impact of that by what they did, the way they did the whole lead pace. It's like, I don't, it's like, I'm like, do you, like, do you get, do you get what the story's about? Do, yeah. Do, do you get this? Do, do, do. It's like a Watchmen thing. It's like, Except they, I mean, they mentioned him in the first, in the first, in the pilot. In, in like the first five minutes, they're like naming all these names and they name the name of the yeah. villain. And it's like, well, eventually we'll get there. So yeah. be excited for that. Uh, uh, I don't know. <sighs> That's a line better. of thinking that is a little difficult to 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 match your perspective on not having read the book. Yeah. Uh, all, all, uh, now you guys got me thinking about how cool it would be if the Expanse just ripped off the foundation. <laughs> if, if you just dropped Harry Seldon into the world of the Expanse, I'd be like, "Let's go, baby!" <laughs> like, well, like Expanse did a great job of it's a huge story, but it has these core characters, these yes. core people. We watched, we grow with them. Here we jump forward and we're dropped into the dynamics of some group, and we see, oh, there's a meeting. We mentioned the thing that you know are in the books, and now carry on. I'm like. Yeah, but I, I kind of the fun of the foundation was these nerdy dialogues of like, why, why bother? Just do your own story then, because tell me, give me into these people their story, and then the flashbacks drive me nuts. Oh, I hate them. Uh, and that's you know, again, that first book it jumps ahead like hundreds of years several times to uh, show the idea that like, hey, this is about the long the long game right this is this is about uh of uh, of uh, uh, you know a, a world in which you're saying like all right yeah we got a few generations and then we're going into the dark ages and then depending on what we do it's either going to be like three generations or 15 generations before we return out of it and it's like okay you were talking about an immense length of time um mm -hmm. that i don't know i, I it was always going to be hard to do uh, boy, is it soupy, but man, is it better than Why the Last Man? So there we go. That's my <laughs> review. Foundation, way better than Why the Last Man. It, I love the casting in Foundation. Sorry, love yeah. the casting. Yeah, great cast. I mean, look, Lee, Lee Pace, the only reason why I don't hate the show, but considering they spend half every episode in that palace and on those sets, is because Lee Pace and the boy and the old man actor are good i like them i really wish they had some connection to the plot or they were uh, i don't know but uh, uh great casting it, it is it, it's a well-casted show it does boy does it swing between like oh my god how expensive was that and did they shoot that in a closet like <laughs> it is like sky captain in the world of tomorrow level uh, uh, uh green screen like it is some of it is weird and the costuming i'm sorry you can't be the, the 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 triumvirate clones that run the galaxy and not have your your clothes look more expensive or look, look as cheap as that. Like it like feels that, small. Yeah, it the, the emperor of like the known universe. It feels like just a very very small world. It, it almost it feels austere, like in a way that you know Game of Thrones. You were never when you have an establishing shot. You were never like confused on who had all the money and who was very, very poor. Right. Where in, in foundation, it, it has this kind of like every room is a big empty room when sometimes there's poor people and sometimes there's rich people in it. Uh, but yeah, I, I you know, there, there, there could, I want to hear yeah. Uh, yeah, Brian, Bryce, what do you, how are, are you guys still loving it? Cause I want our I, audience. To I not just only hear made it two episodes on. in. And so yeah, uh, I, I, I had the strong impression that, this is going to be better as a binge and I'm really intending to get around to binging it. <laughs> yeah. Is it done uh, or is it still unfurling? I don't think it's done. I think there's probably a few more episodes left. I, I fell off about a month or so ago um, and not even because I disliked it. It just a bunch of other stuff came up that I've, that I've been watching. Um, but I, I have enjoyed it. I have enjoyed it as like a big expensive science fiction TV show. 
um, after just having seen Dune, which is a big, expensive science fiction movie. Yeah. Um, and and comparing and contrasting the ways that you have to tell these different stories for the media. Um, but I I I am liking it as someone who does not um, know the books very well, and um, I definitely could feel that moment in episode four where the whole story just kind of lurches and everyone says what we have to be here for a little while now um but i also like the possibility you know owing to to what you're talking about justin with with all the time skips is that if they wanted to next season couple seasons they can just throw out the cast and get new people they can just that's that's... they have a lot of reset buttons that they can hit in a way that was difficult for something like Game of Thrones, where like, okay, well, we're watching these kids throw grow up, and now there's we can't expand outside of that. And part part of the element though is like Isaac Asimov was a really good short story writer because he he had this idea, he had a he had a lot of ideas in his head, and he was able to kind of like uh, write them really well. So in the first book, when you're skipping ahead, 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 you know, uh, uh, you can always create a new conflict you can make a new reason why you're coming in on the story you can make a new reason why this one key issue that there is a man who has told immutable truth that means horrifying things for the galaxy will create new and different conflicts um and and here you know we're we're seeing very small conflicts we're seeing Things that, that are not jumping all that far ahead, and everybody's just I don't know. Mm. Uh, uh, but I'll 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 keep uh, watching it because I uh, because it's hate not myself. why the last man. <laughs> They have, they have, the, oh, uh, no. they have all these. All right, so there is a badass group of women, right, in the comics. Save, they are, save, they are, they save are. Save it for no, after things. I'm not save saving it for, it for after, after things. things. After things. Oh, okay. right, whatever. They wear pink for no reason. Andrew, you will, you will die laughing when I tell you why they make all these badass women wear pink inexplicably. Well, don't murder we'll them live on it. the air. We'll <laughs> save it. We'll save it for after things, but it's one of the funniest reasons ever. Tune into after things. Yeah. Andrew's last episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've got a pick. I, uh, I picked this up over, uh, over the, uh, over the past week or so. Uh, and this is just a fun little, uh, a fun little indie game. It's called unpacking. <laughs> Um, and God, this is like, <laughs> I, it, I, I don't know, like, this could hey be guys. an episode of Silicon Valley. I, <laughs> I swear. Got, I got, I, I got a new pick, guys. It's called Sock Drawer. <laughs> Let's see the socks. Bryce is already going, well, Where these two it? don't match together. And you have to watch because oh, this one. no. Then and a then red sock gets mixed And then sits on the dresser. In. And tells you which socks are a match or not. And you want to know so why? It's like, we're, we're, we're all laughing. <laughs> we're all laughing until this turns into the next, like, you know, Plants vs. Zombies yeah. that sells for, like, $7 billion. <laughs> I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it. I just I just love Bryce just finds these the most, like, if I had GPT-3 come up with a random, <laughs> weird, like, nonsensical spoon drawer. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> So this is this is a game where you go through a person's <laughs> life and you are unpacking their their home throughout the years, um, and it's fun. You it's it's a very light game. Um, there's not a lot of exposition. It's a lot of like, hey, this item is still in my boxes over all the years. Um, it's it's a very nice relaxing game. I would say there's a little bit of gaminess to it of like, oh well, you can't put cups. In the sink, you got to put them in the cabinet a little bit, which, but there's a feature in the game where actually you can turn that off. So if you think <laughs> cups should go on the floor, cups can go on the floor. Um, it's, 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 it's nice and relaxing. Um, they have a cool like GIF feature. So you can, pre- you can re replay like the, the unpacking that you do and make it into a GIF and it's sped up and it's cool. It's, it's, it's cool and it's an, it's a neat little game. So seems like it's, the kind of game that's 99 cents to play. Be by yourself, or for five ninety nine, you could pay somebody else to play it for you. <laughs> it's like the opposite Marie Kondo. You know, it's like yeah. The, yeah, pull it out of the box and put it up. Well, that's gonna be the. Oh, I just spoiled the next game. Oh, oh no! Uh, Unpacking two. Oh. Pack it up. Pack it up. Uh, <sighs> but uh, but yeah, that's that's a that's a, a nice little game. Cool. And I I will mock these things forever, but I love that we live in a world where. We can have games like this. And Bryce can host a show where people watch effing marbles. 
Yeah. <laughs> roll down. <laughs> I was describing this to somebody, and then like you watch Marvels roll down, and they're like looking at me like I'm insane, and I had like a stroke, and I'm making this thing up. Like, no, it's a, it's a game. I got it. I got the T-shirt too, because because I you know my friend. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They don't mm-hmm. get it. Marvels. They don't get it. So prediction for the future: this times a thousand more weird. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, so I I got to pick. Um, uh, uh, first to finish finish Star Trek Lower Decks. Uh, loved it. The last episode was a little bit, a little bit not great for me, but the, everything else was great. Star Trek Lower Decks is one of my favorite shows on TV. If you're into Star Trek, uh, it's aimed at a younger audience, but I'm going to plug this is going to be Star Trek Prodigy, which is the new Nickelodeon show, which looks it's absolutely gorgeous looking graphics and stuff. It's a very different premise. The idea is that these alien kids in the future in this far off part of the galaxy find the starship the starship and so they kind of go on adventures they've got the hologram of of captain janeway to basically guide them because she thinks they're cadets and also what's cool is the voice of the ship's computer is my friend bonnie so uh whoa she Hmm. she's doing well my other friend bonnie but yeah uh but yeah so (laughs) she's doing bonnie gordon is doing the, the voice that bonnie's i know her from the magic castle she's super super talented i've been following her for years and so when i heard about the, she was first she first worked on the show she did like the temp temp like audio for like like the lead character and stuff and then they cast her as the robot so bonnie gordon check her out on twitter if you want to follow her bonnie bell g um she's a regular she's a member or she's works at the magic castle too and that's where i know her from and super 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 talented that is fantastic. Very cool. Uh, I, I, I've been cautious. I, I'm going to give it a try, but I want to hear a little bit more uh, before it's, before I go. It's a kid. Uh, it it yeah. is a, the production qualities are fantastic, but it's also, you realize the CG is amazing, but your eyes realize like, oh, this is network, this is like cable television CG. Right, this, which means, this is closer to like Star Wars Rebels or Clone Wars or something. Yeah, and you're like, yeah, we're probably not going to get more than six characters on screen at a time because of the cost. You know, so like I was watching like kind of the first like episode episode and it's, it's fine. I mean, it's a kid show, but it's like, it looks, music is gorgeous. The ship looks amazing. The production is great. The writing is great. The voices are great. The voice talent's great. Great cast. So cool. Nice. Cool. Star Trek Prodigy. Um, so gentlemen, it's been weird. That's the sound of the sling throwing us into space. Yeah. It's so cool to have a friend all of a sudden be part of that you, you know, you've been just cheering on for years to be part of the Star Trek universe. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Oh, hell yeah. All righty. Well, uh, we'll take a short break here and get ready for after things. All right. BRB. Um, last week we talked, we mentioned we would talk about financial I don't stuff. Know, we got letters. And, um, and then, yeah, we set up to talk about why the last man stuff during weird things as well. Cool. So. BRB. Yeah. yeah. Um, I actually have to be or be as well, Justin. Oh, then I'll just sit here. I'll just give you a little music for a minute. Hey, man. Hey, what's up? We're doing a fun little uh, uh, ask me anything. So ask me anything. I don't I don't care. You think I care what you're asking me? Anything. Nothing's off limits. All right. Now it's I'm pleading. I'm pleading for you to ask me anything. Literally anything. That's what I need. I need literally anything to go on. Who came here from the farthest? My my uh, uh, SSN. My sweet and, and simple nomenclature. I, I'm glad. Well, uh, What am I eating for Thanksgiving? I'm seeing my family. So I'm probably going to be eating turkey and ham and that and, and all and all that. Uh, what's my address? Uh, uh, 420 your mom's house. What time is it? That's a good question. 306 here in the central time zone in Austin, Texas. How's my fence? Straight is uh, straight up and down like like six o'clock. That's what it is. I got a, I got a fixed ass fence. It's pretty good now. We uh, we had uh, and the weather's nice. So uh, we haven't really had. A situation where we're like outside though in, in 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 the backyard which is nice am i running for president in 2024 no uh i will be talking about the presidency in 2024 though unless i die 
Uh, do I make? Good, does it make good neighbors? Uh, our neighbors are pretty good. We had to split our fence with our neighbor because it was in the middle of our house. You there, Andrew? I am here. Uh, yeah, we were not going to talk about your 2028 run until we're no, no. We're yeah, we're going to wait on that until uh, until I run for uh, I move to Vermont and run for Senator Leahy's seat. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Vermont senators, uh, and uh, Elon Musk, uh, yeah, boy, he uh, uh, he uh, uh, he loves that Twitter account. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And as a person who has a somewhat of a big financial stake in Tesla, like sometimes you don't need to. <sighs> sometimes you can you can keep those in the holster, right? You know, he yeah. hangs, hangs with hangs with Kanye for a couple of days, and next thing you know, he's asking Bernie Sanders if he's, or he's questioning the yeah, mor- mortality of one of the one of the uh, 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 one of the one hundred votes that would determine the uh, uh, you know contracts for uh, SpaceX. Yeah, yeah. Uh yeah he's uh yeah boy that elon musk oh elon you know if you spell elon wrong you can spell loan mm. or noel or noel or even noel yeah or e- e- eoli no eon 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 yeah leon yeah Constantly Leon, constantly on. Uh, uh, oh, uh, so Princess Leary asks when Brian's building a mini mini golf course at HQ. So I went, I went awesome. to mini golf uh, two weeks back. With, the one on on uh, Lamar. Yeah, the Peter Pan. Yeah, how is it? Uh, it's fun. What they don't tell you, so there's like a big Peter Pan statue outside. Yeah. To draw you in. Yeah. Um. And there are two different courses. There's an easy course on the left and a harder course on the right. Yeah. And so when you go through the car, the harder course, you pass behind it. And so you, the very first thing you do is you see its big ass. Oh, <laughs> right in Peter front Pan's of big ass. Yeah. And yeah. he's like kneeling because if he was standing, he would be too tall. Sure. And, uh, he's got some cake. He's He's got some cake. And then <laughs> you can't tell from the roadway, but he's got a... Uh, uh, like a football jersey on instead of like a Peter Pan really? tunic or anything. Yeah, and yeah. and you could see the numbering and then the lettering all on the back. Um, strange, a strange Peter Pan at the Peter Pan Golf Course. I've heard it's pretty fun. It is good. I've heard it's I've heard it's a fun time. It's good. I ended up uh, tied for third place. I think. Nice. I, uh, I'm all for the mini golf course on the compound as well as the small train that you can ride. Oh, we gotta get Ooh. the little train. When when he when he uh, uh, when he in on the on on building a small train, Brian. Uh, I'm thinking uh, zip line first. Zip line first. Mm. Yeah, like a, I, I, build a, a a tower observatory that has a zip line that goes down to the pond. But but the train the trains are like you can it's actually it's, I've looked into this, Brian. I've done some I've got some spreadsheets for some data. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah, uh, you can. They have the tracks pre-made. You just put some, you know, gravel down as your fill, and you put the track, and and it's real, and you can have a train there. Tra- and- trains have to be like, um, what's the word? Horizontal. I mean, yeah, you have to be upright. Yeah, yeah, that that's going to be a problem. Given that Why the entire property is a valley, <laughs> all a loop de loop. Oh, like a little I line, a little all, train. all I see is opportunity for trussels. Uh, right. Yeah, no, no. If we're talking about like a bobsled track or something, <laughs> a big luge. Yeah. Ooh, it could go sideways. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You make a little train that goes from this studio to the soundstage. <laughs> <laughs> you just hop on, chugga, 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 chugga. <laughs> okay, next stop, right next back stop. there. Yep, down to the, uh, the sound stage. <laughs> you need to hire a better barker. <laughs> hey, screw you, buddy. You uh, only have one line. Hey, Why do you of remember course. it? How's that for another line? <laughs> now he fights kid? with me. I'm realizing I'm, we, we I'm can replace it with a recording. A very pleasant <laughs> recording. <laughs> a timer. Bing bong. <laughs> it's just that. Have you, have you, been, no, have you, have you guys seen, uh, uh, 
side, I think it's side talk TV. Mm-mm. It's a YouTube and Instagram uh, uh, thing from New York, but they basically, we can't play it here because it's filled with curse words, but it's basically just going to interesting events in New York and people just yelling at the camera, but they edit it together in like a 15 second uh, uh, thing. And one of their uh, uh, catchphrases is, is big bong. People big bong. just yell big bong. Uh, Andrew has sent a little, across a link to lawn tracks, which uh, enable something like this. Uh, oh, man, that's, that's a, a hell of a train. Is, is somebody pedaling or? <laughs> it is pretty slow on flat It's a grass. train, man. What do you want it to be? Fast and furious? Uh, yeah, what is this, Japan? Uh, uh, I think it's, it's pedaling. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's an amazing smug look from a kid on a train. <laughs> that dude is rolling train style. Could be you, Brian. Could be you. Could Just be. Saying. Pedaling, Could be. pedaling on the way to the, to the sound stage. Pedaling, I'll, Okay, pedaling. all right. I, okay, I want train. You want zip line? Compromise, gondola. Yeah! yeah. Now we're talking. Uh, you have to have the big station like at uh, Bush Gardens, and you got to get ready and sit in at just the right time. Yeah. You got to lean over and have somebody yell at you, don't lean out of the gondola. Well, of course you like, lean out. Whatever, I own this place. <laughs> In that yeah, I, like the idea I that, own this place. I like the idea that Brian's like, all right, uh, can we do it? Like, Brian, I guess I'll put you put, put people in there and they're like, okay, ready to go. And they go and then you got to go run to the other end. <laughs> and get off I'm like, and, like oh, did, you enjoy, did you enjoy your ride? <laughs> Alrighty, uh, I think we're ready to do after things. Okay, ready. Are you yeah. good, Andrew? Sure. We got letters, I hope, because I got nothing. Uh, well, uh, we, last week we said we would talk about financial advice. When do oh, I yeah. get to yell yeah, about why the last man um, at the beginning or the end? I would say at the end, at so the we end. can do a time code. Yeah. All right, all right whatever. Let's go. Let's talk about money. All right. Some sh- <laughs> all right. Uh, then Andrew, I'll count you in in three, two. Hello and welcome to the After Things podcast. I'm Adrian Main, joined by Justin Robert Young. Hello, friends. Brian Brushwood. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Who wants to go on a gondola? I know who does. Mr. Bryce Castillo. I would like to, per- yes, let me on your gondola, <laughs> uh, podcast host. Let me on your gondola, <laughs> podcast host. Podcast. I, when I was a kid... <laughs> Um, I was obsessed like with the like the, the trams, like those overhead gondolas and stuff, which I realized was a term that could mean the boat or anything, but I just always associated with the thing they hang there. And I once tied a rope from our upper deck to the fence that we shared with our neighbors. And I had a pulley and I would go sit on this thing and I'd ride it. And I went and I was getting kind of heavy. And as a kid, you don't really don't know day to day that yeah, you just you just put on fifteen pound, fifteen pounds pork chop and it Fence shook, and I heard this clatter <gasps> on the other side. And I go look, and my 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 best friend living next door, his dad is there, this heavy set guy. I knocked over the entire wood pile. <gasps> uh oh! Oh, he goes, what happened? And I go, I I made a gondola. <laughs> He's like, oh what? What did you do? And I'm like, oh yes, I'll put it back up. So I had to go. He's like, a gondola? Like, what is this? He couldn't. To me, it was obvious. He couldn't understand what happened to the fence or why all this thing knocked over. He just sees me there going, whoopsie do. So, wow. The the first of many times my neighbors had to suffer from one of my <laughs> hair you know, braid schemes. We had this hill, and so like I would like I would be making go karts, and so. You know, I would go take the wheels off the lawnmower, <laughs> nail them to two by fours and put them on there. What? But sometimes I'd go down the wheel and like the wheels would fly off, but be really fast. And I'd be sliding on doing that slide out on the plywood and the wheels would just ping off and hit garage doors or hit <laughs> doors or windows and stuff. And it create kind of a like, hey, what's going on? And I'd be out there in the street with and I, I didn't have a street. I used like the little rope sort of thing there. And I'm just there's a kid there in the it's middle of the street. No wheels. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just this piece of plywood. I'm like, what is wrong with this? Can I get kid? a jump? What? It... Can, I... Can I get yeah. a jump? <laughs> Going my way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyhow, that's mm. my story, guys. 
Um, that's why I didn't pass the SpaceX interview. <laughs> mm. uh, uh, I, I think took. we I think we promised to talk money this week, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Use bolts. Don't hammer your wheels in like <laughs> I did. That's what I did. Oh, okay. I didn't know. I was nine, Bryce. Stop judging. Uh, Yeah, we were talking about (laughs) last week the idea of, uh, we got into the subject of a lot of people we talk to are independents or people who have side projects or different things. Planning financially is really, really hard when you're in a uncertain sort of uh, line of work. Uh, You know, I I recently had my first like, like real quote job that I've ever had. And you're like, oh, well, this is a person. This is your finance. This is your finance package. This is this. This is all these things. I'm like, oh, this is what like normal people get in jobs. Like, this is interesting. So you're saying like, I just have this thing. I don't even think about it, and it works. I'm like, well, that's novel. But I wanted to talk about like uh, what were our different solutions for kind of financial planning, et cetera. What we do as creatives. What, uh, what was the biggest surprise when when you took a peek into the uh, when you took a walk on the normal side? Well, I, I was, I shaded things a bit. My first ever job where I got a thing like that was when I worked for the James Randi Foundation a billion years ago. And there they had like a 401k and I was on there for like a few years. And so that was the thing, like the idea that would be automatic, that was a thing for me that was like, okay, like I don't think about it and it does it. But the danger of that is people talk about reaching retirement, like, oh, it's not enough. It's like, yeah, that program was designed to give you, not even talk about social security, but a lot of retirement programs, they put a little bit of money away. You can't just put that in the hands of somebody else entirely. Yeah. So I would say that I understand why people are complacent, but I also understand that what we've talked about before for everybody, even if you're like struggling, have every month, one, use an app like Acorns or one of these things that, t- that rounds up and puts things into a bank account or invest it for you to put something away. Even if and it sounds counterintuitive, and be like, even if you are, you're in debt, $10 a month, $20 a month in just a regular broad-based mutual fund or something, because that it's invest in that habit. Invest in that habit of doing that. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll co-sign Acorns. I use Acorns, have been for for. A, a couple of years now for, for, for a little while. I have a little chunk of change there. Uh, and uh, what does it feel like to use the app? Like walk me through the experience. Uh, you set it and forget it. Um, the, the basic idea is you say, Hey, hook into my bank account and round up anything. That's not a flat, a flat dollar charge. And once it hits, once that amount hits like $5 or something, they take it out of your bank account and they put it into, uh, in, into uh, an index fund. They have a couple of different options with acorns in terms of like right now saving and then there's a retirement based one. Um, but the nice thing about it is uh, a, they do the roundups. And so you kind of just set it and forget it. Um, but you can also do like what you mentioned, Andrew is say, Hey, every month just take 20 bucks on top or Hey, d- instead of the normal roundups, like do them three X or something like that. Um, and over time yeah. that little bit adds up and it adds up and, um, you know, it's, it is, it's, uh, I don't know the exact fund that it is, but it, it, it makes a, a little bit of a return. Um, and I think you pay acorns like a couple of dollars a year or something for the service, but it's it, the, the best thing I think about it is that it is, it, it is really set it and forget it. And it is kind of all a one, all in one thing. If you want a little bit of immediate savings, if you want uh retirement savings, they've got like a card and all these like found money programs as well that you can really get into but um just if you if you need a program that will save some money for you uh then acorns is really good for that a lot of banks will do that too you can just do it's called like roundup here's the advantage of this is that you forget you and you're absorbing that cost obviously somewhere and like your expenses but if you when I was going, like when I was at my most, like, un, you know, things were like the the scariest for me financially trying to figure out where things were going to go. I got in the habit of doing a spreadsheet and itemizing every single expense so I could understand exactly where money was going. And it would amaze me because I'd be like, oh, I spent, you know, you know, they'd be like, oh, I spent 130 bucks on subscription services or other stuff I didn't worry about. I didn't think about or other stuff. Or then I started itemizing like, oh, yeah, you know, every day I'd go out to lunch and I pay $4.50 for the soda. 
you know, where, and I've been telling myself I want to cut back. And if I, if I stop doing that, then I'm going to have an extra, you know, 150 bucks a month that I can invest or whatever, or not, you know, they're, they're all that you start to see that. So doing like a spreadsheet's a great way to do it. And then when you use a roundup thing, you quickly absorb it and you don't even realize that you're paying it. And then you just open up your account. Now I don't use it as much anymore. Cause like I do everything on my Apple card now. So I got, I got the Apple card cause that does the immediate cash back. And I use my Apple card like a debit card, but I have automatic deduction. So the end of the month, it's always paid off. So I've never carry a balance. And that's, you know, that's, that's the danger of the credit card is it, well, I'll just carry this balance. It's like, yeah, it's carrying a balance is like being on a diet and going to McDonald's and eating fries. You can, you can go to McDonald's, eat a salad or have some chicken and be fine. But once you eat the fries, you failed. And if you're trying to manage your credit card debt and you don't need to or manage, you're trying to manage your finances and you don't need the debt, always pay it off. Always yeah, pay. that's that's something that I've uh, uh, thankfully held held on to is is, you know, I, I have two cards, one for my business and another for uh, personal, both of which give me a. Uh, uh, cash back so uh, chase inc is the one that i have for the business that gives a, a a fairly healthy return and then i have an amex that gives me a bunch of amex points uh that also does a uh a, you know each month i get certain benefits or whatever so uh but but at that point it's like i i never ever 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 carry a balance like like it is it is spent it is paid i am i am up to date unless i i forget to pay but I, but if whenever i see it it is it is it is paid uh, uh asap so uh what's the answer for people who are like uh, must be nice i literally can't afford it i mean i guess i guess the t tough lesson is st stay within your lane your means you know yeah. <laughs> it's the roundups make it a little easier because it it is a, it, it's a small it, it ends up being a pretty small amount overall um, I would say that that's a good place to start as do roundups. Oh, that does add, a, it adds up over time. Um, but it can and, be tough to set aside money when, when you don't have any. Yeah. And I, and I would, I, the argument to make too, is it like there will be exceptions, but I've never had a friend that couldn't cut out five or 20 bucks a month because I would find out like, well, I got to go Friday, do my, beer. I got to do my beer or do this or what I got. I'm like, no, like you're, you don't, they, I, you, they, some people, they don't want to sacrifice something to get something up. And were, were, I, in, were I in debt right now, um, hear me right now, I would do Uber. I would do, yeah. I would do, I'd do a thing. I don't want to do Uber. I'd do DoorDash. I would do that if I were in debt I, I, and, and I wanted to get it. I, I think that's worth it uh, pursuing as a kind of a side jag here is your whole worldview becomes broken when you're in debt. Mm -hmm. especially that high interest short-term debt with credit cards or mm -hmm. whatever. Like you don't see opportunities. You walk right past million dollar mm -hmm. ideas left and right, which makes it so, so important that, uh, that um, you know, and the version I had learned was from the richest man in Babylon, you know, a part of everything you earn is yours to keep. And if it's just automatic and you have a bed, then, then even if things get scary, they're not truly scary because you know there's this ripcord yeah. that that you could do it, but mm -hmm. but you really do uh, uh, take it from your old pal Brian. Uh, uh, you could lose your damn mind uh, uh, not seeing opportunities left and right if if you're obsessed with the fact that that you're sliding farther and farther behind. I, I think that I, I go ahead. Yeah, you know, I just wonder like like I'm like I'm like serious as possible like right now if i was like if i was in a financial situation i didn't see there was a light like i don't i would do door to, i would do something like that i don't care if i go like hey aren't you andrew man you have to be like yep that's me here's i would not care i would not care what other people's perception of me is because the most important one to me is me as being a guy that's pays my debts is financially responsible and being solvent like i don't care i will take the hit from other people going, oh, this guy had a show, and now he's doing this. Would not get zero Fs to give. And and also, just... th there's less. Um, mm, I, 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 degrading is probably not the right words, but there there's less aggressive things to do. For example, taking on a roommate. Uh, yeah, it'll be kind of annoying, but but that's a massive. Uh, chopping all of your utilities, your rent, and everything in half would be huge, and it wouldn't be a forever thing. It would be just till you get back on your feet kind of thing. I mean, there are big moves that, that everybody can make. 
Yeah, I, I think the biggest thing, if we are talking about uh, a lot of money problems are really shame problems or self-control problems. And ultimately, the things that benefit you in those areas, which are communication, transparency, understanding, you know, where you are and being okay with where you, you are in the universe is simultaneously the way that, that you do better with money and something that we're just kind of, uh, 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 assuming here that, that I think is worth laying out is what Andrew said, like he made a spreadsheet. So he saw where all money was coming in and leaving and and i i remember walking into andrew's office and seeing a, a cut out column spreadsheet that he had right over his desk that he looked at so he knew what his monthly nut was what what the the expenses were that that he needed to uh across like if you know then you will be better the problem is is that it hurts sometimes and and then a lot of anxiety comes in to look and know and and that's where it's like if, if you look at where this breaks down, a lot of it is the bravery and the understanding to say, I'm going to be hyper aware of where all my money comes in from and where all my money goes. And and at that point, you are gifting yourself the knowledge, not only of allowing of not allowing other doubt to creep into your head, but also the ability to make decisions, to make to make good decisions financially. Uh, the two biggest changes I saw in my life, uh, financially and physically, did not physically did not involve a diet, and financially did not involve a budget. Uh, but both of them involved one thing, and the rule was: spend whatever you want, eat whatever you want. There's only one rule: you have to know how much you're spending and how much you're eating. You have yeah. to write it all down. And it is astonishing how, how, number one, it's very freeing because you literally do whatever you want. But then once you know yeah. what this costs and you know relative to other things, it just changes your appetite. Uh, and, and I mean that both literally with your body in the form of calories yeah. and in your consumption habits as an as, as a individual financially. And I'd, I'd say, too, that Every person I know who's really successful, like really successful, went through some sort of financial crisis, either when they were young and they grew up around being poor or they built a business or they went to some point and they were extended. And that and it's almost like that's the lesson you have to learn to wire your brain to really understand value and stuff. Um, and I, I think I want to get people to get out of the whole shame kind, kind idea, the idea of feeling, feeling embarrassed. You're not your bank account. Yeah. And you, you, you are what you do. And if you run from responsibilities, you ignore it. That's what you are. But if you're a person that tackles them and does them, handles them head on, uh, you know, I'm going to bring up like, you know, my favorite Elon Musk story was when he got to Canada, he needed to make, you know, despite the, the stories of this, you know, oh, his family diamond mines, it just wasn't true. It broke. This is broke like 19 year old or 18 year old one that needed money. And goes to the, you know, the employment office and says, hey, what pays the most amount of money? That's Elon. What's the most, what gets me the most amount of money per hour? They're like, uh, shoveling coal in a furnace. It's really stupid hot. Nobody wants to do it. It's like, okay, I'll go do it. And Elon Musk, now the world's richest man, effing shoveled coal in a furnace for a while, made some money. He did that. That guy did that job. Say what you want about him. Crazy, whatever kind of thing. He did that. You know, as a teenager, we had to get jobs. I worked at a movie theater. I was too young with state to work, but I worked under the table, clean toilets. I clean toilets. I still remember the scent of that orange cleanser to do that. I would go do magic on cruise ships and I wanted to keep my rate up. And so if I couldn't get a cruise ship booking, I didn't underbid myself. I folded newspapers at a newspaper plant, you know, when I was like 20 years old. I went, you know, I had a friend whose dad was an accountant, which maybe shows you how good of an accountant he was, but I would go with him. We'd go make, get paid cash. You know, you'd spend there for like three hours folding newspapers. I did that because I'm like, well, I could go do this, make some extra cash and then wait for the next gig to come around. Or I, I did extra work and stuff like I just I don't I respect the person that works. I respect the person that works. I, I just the person that says I've got excuses or it's beneath me, whatever. I have no respect for that. Uh, I, I, I do want to give um, 
I want to express that an understanding that different people are dealt different hands. Um, and I understand that in the Industrial Revolution, there were a lot of 12-year-olds uh, working in coal mines that probably should have been learning to read and so on. But uh, on the flip side, ooh, does it chap my hide. My favorite thing about turning 15 was uh, I started driver's ed when I was 14 years old because the day I turned 15, I went and took my test to get my learner's permit. When the day I could do that, when I was 15, I got a job as a fry cook at a Chick-fil-A. And, and it's strange to my ears, um, and, and maybe this is something somebody can explain if they want to write in, but it's strange to my ears to hear people saying that it's a bad thing to be 15 and making minimum wage or doing, doing work, because I loved it. I loved it. I made I made enough money. I spent uh, uh, of the three dollars and eighty five cents per hour I was able to make during the day. I would spend my lunch hour in the mall at the arcade, spending a dollar fifty of, the, of of just one of those. You yeah. know, like I I worked fifteen minutes and was able to spend a full hour at the arcade, and I loved it. Um, and that's not and that's to say everybody has to feel the same way I do. But but boy oh boy can I empathize with with that? I I really enjoyed making money. I there is a high correlation between the people that I work with and I find are really motivated and get stuff done. Either they had jobs when they're fifteen, or they had little side businesses or businesses that did that. The the people that I know who are the most capable and getting stuff done at that age, they learned responsibility. They were doing stuff. They were getting yelled at by customers. They went through all of that. And they never treat they were never treated like special, precious, that's beneath me kind of mentality. You know, and and I think I get I get uh, I mean that's one of the things my frustrations like kind of minimum wage the job like you're like, oh minimum wage now, it's pretty good money for 15. Yeah, they won't hire a 15 year old anymore. That's the problem. It's harder to get these jobs like regular over the, you know, legit over the counter jobs at that age now. And pro and con don't need to discuss the minimum wage laws, but you price them out of the market. And so, and that might be kind of an effect. We may be seeing that you have a lot of a generation of kids that did not get to have kind of normal jobs. And they're the first time they've ever worked in the workforce is they come out of college filled with now, ideas about how the world should work. I will go to bat for the younger generation because, uh, the, like just for grins, uh, like Penny isn't charging yet, but she should be because she knows how to animate and draw and create custom stuff. Now, right now, She's practicing by creating original content, fan fiction, and that kind of stuff. But what she's really doing is practicing up valuable skills. And if she was a little bit entrepreneurial minded, she wish she would be on Fiverr or on 99 Designs yeah. doing all of that stuff. Um, uh, and and luckily, you know, she's growing up in a household where that's not really uh, necessary. We're, 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 yeah. But oh, I, I was going to say we're, we're both of our parents turned art into money. Correct. Correct. Yeah. And, and, and seem to be doing well enough that, that, that she doesn't need the cash. But if you do need the cash, I mean, uh, don't wait, don't wait. If you're young, uh, uh, start charging, learn, learn the market, uh, because it turns out, uh, we have had top tier web designers that we, to this day, have no idea how old they were when they were working for us. And uh, I'm pretty yeah. sure we paid hundreds or thousands of dollars to 14-year-olds who were just out there doing stuff. Because yeah. Which is awesome. Right? Right? Yeah, I love, like, there is, and that's a thing, there is a talent pool out there, and that's why I love things like platforms like Fiverr and stuff, and also, like, there's a global talent pool out there, too. And sometimes, like, there there's entrepreneurial people out there getting things done and and you know it could be some kid in indonesia or whatever awesome and that's that's one of the arguments for the prevalent making tools widely available i mean that's one of those things and i think this goes all the way back to we talked about it last week uh peter teal's uh zero to one i think he mentioned the specific tool of i think that's where i first heard about 99 designs and stuff uh and uh we have a artist who has worked on the last three to five years of the generations of puzzle boxes. We love their work. I have no idea their, their ethnicity, their gender, where they are, how much money they make or whatever, but they now understand what we go for year after year after year so well that they just hit us up saying, hey, this is what I'm thinking for this year. It's based on this idea. What do you think of, of this? 
Um, that is so awesome. That is awesome, and it's a game anybody could start playing. And if you're somebody who is sensitive about the stigma of driving driving for Uber or delivering pizzas or what have you, uh, 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 guess what? Uh, I don't know this person's real name, and everything's handled. Yeah, yeah. If you don't think about COVID, you get to wear a mask. So yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, yeah. In LA, oh, go ahead. Sorry, Justin. Well, yeah, yeah just underlining there's there's a, the the avenues to make money in 2021 are a lot different than they were in the mid to late 90s when i was uh 15 uh bussing tables under the table for uh, uh you know in tower pizza so like a uh, uh, boy uh, is, is it is it a a very uh, uh a totally open market yeah so, i'd say if you've got electronic skills if you've got like di you know information technology skills there's a yeah. great opportunity there yeah uh one thing that the ghost of night attack posted in the chat uh we were talking about debt and um he mentioned that uh uh dave ramsey is a big fan of separating the psychological aspect of getting ahead financially from the the what he calls the nerd part of it uh there's some amount of like maximizing your numbers or whatever uh for example the nerd part of your brain will say you should you should pay off your debts based on interest rate. But the problem is oftentimes the highest interest rate is also the biggest insurmountable mountain. So psychologically, it's important to get that sense of rhythm of success of, of getting ahead, which is again, part of why I like cutting off 15% off the top of everything that comes in so that it's always there. Those soldiers are, are working for me. But uh, in the case of Dave Ramsey talk, which again, he'll be the first to admit, is not by the numbers the best thing to do. He says, uh, attack your smallest debt first, so you get that smug satisfaction of the scratching off that line and move it on to the next uh, mini boss. Uh, and I, I, I rather like that. Yeah, I agree. I think the problem is that you get advice that in the abstract seems like the great, whether it's finances or like, you know, well, economists say to this, like, well, guess what? We're humans and we make decisions on different things. And if we, if we were perfectly rational in everything, which is in, like, it's in, irresponsible to think that we are, you know, you go to the doctor. I mentioned this before, like my rants, like they're like, Oh, you, you need to exercise. It's like, yes, that is true. Pick one, start with one, right. Then do the other. Yeah. If you do both, you're going to be hungry and angry and crave everything more and more, and you're going to give up. Having, having said all of that, I am just infatuated with the Reddit subreddit uh, uh, fi uh, uh, financial independence retire early, which is a group of people who are obsessed with spending as little money as possible, banking everything, maximizing every little number, doing all the nerd stuff so that they can, like, their point of pride is the age at which they can choose to never work again. Yeah. Uh, and then they they lead, and, and it's so fascinating to me because uh, to my eyes, I'm, I'm both very, very impressed and equally horrified because it's like you're doing a job you hate so that you, and you're doing it as hard as you can for the purpose of not doing anything as, as soon as you're able. I I, I hear it because, like, <laughs> I was at this point where I had this, like, uh, years and years, years ago, before I even started working with Justin, I had my magic business where I could produce magic books and DVDs. My costs were really low. I had a little apartment in Fort Lauderdale, downtown Fort Lauderdale. It was great. I could go out to eat, you know, a couple times a, a week, whatever, dating life. And I was just very, I was making enough money, had to work very little, very, very, very little amount of work. I had my own sort of four hour work week kind of thing to kind of live comfortably, whatever. And I realized, I said, holy crap, I'm not being, amb and I put money away too. I had money, like, like stock money put away that was growing, but I'm like, I am not ambitious and I'm not growing as a person. And I decided I'm going to buy a house. And the reason I decided to buy a house was I said, this responsibility, I'm going to try to adapt to that. And so I got a house and then I'm like, I got to grow my business and I need to be more ambitious. And then I did, you know, and that was sort of my pattern was like that idea of like, I can retire now, but like, good Lord, 
what would I do? What would it be? Yeah. Right, what right. is, I mean, life, life is a holistic exercise, right? Like, like it, work and money and what you do and what you want and your physical fitness. Like these are all things that are connected to each other. These are all things that one way or another uh, feed through our brains and how we view the world, how we view ourselves, how we view, how we fit into the world. Um, so, uh, 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 yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I mean, like it, it, it's funny that, I mean, I, I, while I can understand the idea of maximizing every cent that you earn and, and, uh, that is certainly a healthy instinct, uh, boy, it is it contrary to the world, the, 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 the maxim by which I have kind of lived my life, which is I want to work forever because i like what i do and it fulfills I, me and it I and took, it's cool i took a job this year the point at which i i absolutely do not need a job trust me i'm gonna book's been great everything's great i've been stupid lucky i do two books a year to sign a new deal with amazon everything's great i was bored i was bored <laughs> you know and they're like you want to do this i'm like well this will be interesting so cool let me do this. Well, and and there's some number of people out there, um, and I, I hope I'm not disclosing anything out of school. Andrew's not kidding. He he took a job job. <laughs> yeah. And 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 does and has not stopped writing books, has not stopped creating projects, has not stopped all of these things. Um, there are people out there where it's like, why on earth would you do that? You you won. You don't have to have a job. And the answer, quite simply, is very eloquent because I'm bored. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I got it. All of a sudden, the opportunity came up to work with, for the disclosure, I work for a company called OpenAI, and which is doing exciting, exciting stuff in artificial intelligence. And there was this opportunity for me to do cool stuff. And I get to be around. You know, I had a meeting before here. I had a meeting with I'm on the I was on the applied team, and I got to switch over to the comms team. And so I'm I'm talking to our, our comms people who you know, the, the head of the department I work with answered directly to Tim Cook. So I get to work with a guy that was the head of comms for all of Apple. And like, that's amazing. And so that's awesome. And like, you know, we do these tech tech talks and I get to sit in and listen to the best AI researchers in the world talk about stuff. And and that's what I want to do. I don't want to be like, eh, I'm just going to hop in an RV and drive around and see stuff. Like, no, I want to be around really smart, capable people and just well, you and, know, and, that's and amazing. Uh, uh, this is fascinating because you're approaching a situation that we've talked about before, but you're approaching it from the other direction. Usually it's people who have a day job who want to bust out of a day job and they have this fantasy of, you know, take this job and shove it and off I go. Uh, and uh, I, I've recommended before the book uh, Quitter by John Acuff, where he reframes everything and says, uh, uh, hey, for just a second, uh, imagine that those 40 hours a week that you're giving to your day job are not a uh, 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 something that is trapping you. Imagine they are your patron. They are somebody who believes in you and they're willing to give you health insurance, a 401k and, and, and a stable salary, and you get the rest of all of your time to go out there and attempt your dream with the safety net of never really having to, 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 to worry about it. Uh, and uh, I, I rather like the idea of uh, of of defetishizing that idea of of going independent and going it alone. Well, I, I, you know, I think we've talked about this a lot when it comes to independent stuff. But uh, one of the most impactful decisions that I had to internalize and follow through on was like, all right, we are looking at podcasting as being living. When do you make the jump? When do you quit your job so you can you can be a full time podcaster? And the answer that I heard from, uh, you know, many, many, many smart people, including the two that are also on this show, was like, when it demands that you quit the job. Right. Like, uh, 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 it, it is not, you're not wishing and hoping and quitting the job because now with all this free time, I'll be able to really make it sing. It's like, to a certain extent, there, there are some people who thrive on that and God bless you. But like, for me, the biggest thing that I had to realize was like, here was the phase. Number one really care about doing this other job and put a ton of time and effort into it and sacrifice things for it. Number two, be very excited when it's making money and you can say, oh my God, how fun is it that I have two sources of income? I'm making so much money. Step three, have it be so annoying that you're doing two jobs and realizing that one of them could actually pay for your stuff and then you make the decision to give up money 
to give up stability so you can further nurture this thing that's already kind of working for you. Uh, yeah, the, 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 I, I do, uh, uh, I understand he's a politicized figure now, but boy, oh boy, do I love that Scott Adams story about uh, how after having created Dilbert, he continued to work his day job because it just became zero stress and fun for him and actually kind of his writer's room. Like just watching The Office uh, made him very happy. He, I think he worked it for five years before he was like, yeah, I can't afford, sorry guys, that, that was fun though. I, I had the weird sort of thing happen today that was like uh, my girlfriend went to the dentist and uh, she had to get like a, a crown put in. She calls me up and I'm like, okay, yeah. But I'm like, oh wait, we have dental insurance. Ah! <laughs> and it was like a thousand bucks less, you know? And I'm like, yeah. I'm just so used to like, here's a card, pay for it, pay for it, whatever. Okay. And then, you know, like when all my bill, like whatever, like this, and I'm like, Oh yeah. I, when I made this agreement, like they made a promise that they would help pay for this stuff. And yeah. like, like I've been paying my, my health plan. And then that, like, you know, I switched that over to like, huh, that's, yeah. that's, I guess Curious. that's cool. I mean, it, it's an interesting experience, but, um, uh i guess my motto is uh listen um whatever it takes yeah yes I don't, I don't. uh bryce do you, do you have kind of an overarching philosophy that has guided you a north star when it comes to financials uh no there's there's a reason i'm not mentioning this conversation <laughs> today um uh no, you know, I, I, I really, I really do like acorns and, um, uh, that's kind of the beginning and end of it only because it's kind of a, uh, pretty complete circle. I feel like in terms of, it, w w uh, w w would I be talking out of school if I were to, uh, express that my impression has been that, and this is a known bug in Bryce point oh, that, uh, if Bryce sees money in the account, that that looks like that'd be fun to spend. <laughs> and so Bryce likes things that hide money from Bryce. I'm not in this conversation very much, but <laughs> no, uh, Bry Bryce. But I, I, I hey, like. I, but 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 I, I mean, and you know that is yes a little bit yes okay yes a little bit yes. like that. But that and that is why I use acorns and and why I have acorns be a little. Um, aggressive a little of like hey do my roundups and also just like take 10 20 bucks a month whatever i don't even know what it is but take some it's and throw it in there because you know what maybe i do need to have like a thousand dollars just sitting somewhere and i don't know about it and i don't think about it i mean i think that's the best thing for any investment thing is it's most effective when you don't need that money and you don't need it to be liquid. And you don't Cause, think cause, of cause it, it as also, real money. Well, because like, it also shows, again, it's all of this psychology. All of this is our own uh, uh, sense of it. But it's like y there is short-term view. And so if short-term view is $3,000... Holy crap! I'm, I, I can I can book a trip. I can yeah. I can buy a new thing. Uh, uh, I can put a down payment on a car. There's a lot of things with short term view says three thousand. If you know if if short term view is one thousand two hundred, you're like all right. Well, rent and food. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, there we, there we go. But it's like wh whether or not that you actually had three thousand and it and it's it's put somewhere else. It's the same thing. You actually you you are you are better off because your short term view might be not treat yourself, right. but let let's 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 stay a little it, bit more lean. It is it is. Uh, I guess my my advice is it is a slow climb out of being paycheck to paycheck, um, and you have to remind yourself kind of the idea of of knocking off the little debts first is you have to remind yourself that it, it is a lean that, that, that if you're, if you're going for a lean mix, it yeah. needs to stay lean. Um, and then hopefully you get to a point where you can be a little there, more free flowing about it. There's Depending. yeah. I'm a big believer too. in putting it out of reach. Like the fact that like I, I did like a Vanguard account automatically put stuff in there. It's like, I can get it out. But I got to go to a website. I got to log in. I got to yeah. do that. And I'm like, I, I didn't need that thing anyway. So I, I believe, yeah, making it harder to do that is helpful. Uh, there I, is... I also suffer from the same um, dispensation where it's like, that, which is why I love scraping money off the top and hiding it as fast as possible. Put it in a slightly inconvenient place where 
I don't think of it as real money. Well, but remember to keep track of it. I made that mistake. Well, mis I, oh. I found out like, oh, I have like, I have like a net trade account from like 15 years ago and there's money and there's a couple thousand dollars in there. Like, like do keep track of it. Um, but there's, you'll hear these, th the ratio, like all oh, the, all the rich get richer. Like, yeah, there's, it's a fun fact. Um, when you're investing money, instead of paying off debt, you actually make money faster. It's weird. I can't explain the math for that. Yeah. But it turns out that's a fact. And that's the thing. If every if you're paying $100 a month to pay off debt, that's money that's just evaporating. If you're putting $100 a month into even just a regular mutual fund that grows at like, you know, a broad, you know, index-based fund, that's making money and it's outpracing inflation. And the sooner you get rid of all that debt and and people people get locked into this well, I'm going to wait for the windfall. Then I'm going to do it. I'm going to wait for the windfall. And I, I, I have been very lucky uh, financially, and it never came from. There's been a couple times I've taken like a windfall and invested it, but like my biggest growth happened not because of a windfall, just because I just was methodical year after putting stuff away. And that's don't wait for the wall. Just get that habit now. And there's a there's that beautiful moment where all of a sudden, when you have zero debt. And every hundred dollars extra, a thousand dollars extra, you do send off into the ether, goes into an account, and you watch your money grow. Yeah, absolutely. And then you buy NASCAR hats. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, it was it's, it's F one. It's Come a on. special Monica. That okay, man, F1, that sorry. man is a classy gentleman. He's not buying NASCAR hats. He's buying <laughs> F one hats. Right. Can I complain about why the last man now? <laughs> no, yes. All right. Go ahead. What's your yes, pick? Yes. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna I, I can spoil everything, right? Nobody cares that I'm gonna spoil. Yeah, I think nobody's gonna yeah. care about Wide Last Man. Yeah. Yeah, so after you get done with this, yeah, no. So number one, they've got an episode <laughs> where not only is there an internal military coup, yeah. Also, there are rebels breaching the Pentagon, and then they have a fight between the rebels and the rebels are confused by who the president is because the coup is happening. So imagine how thrilled you are as a viewer while all of this is, is, is being layered on top of it. But that's not even what I, what, 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 what my main issue is. My main issue is uh, there is a, a group during the, uh, in, in, in the comics and in the television show called uh, the Amazons. Right. And uh, they are introduced to you uh, in the comic as being, like a a a imagine an all female biker gang, but right. they're all on horseback. They use bow and arrows because they can they they that way they can keep their ammunition as you know ev evergreen. They don't got to scour for for bullets. Oh, and and it's and it's almost a quasi religious in their fanaticism to yes. the point that like the titular um, so to speak uh, uh, Amazons of the past they they would they would remove one of their breasts so that they could fire so arrows. they can fire but, arrows yeah. straighter and and better and they are uh, uh, you know another element of the philosophy of what happens in a world without men they, right uh, in this version they're just kind of like a a a, 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 a bit more man haiti self-help group there are multiple party scenes. <laughs> they all wear pink. And then they, they periodically may have sex with each other. We're not really sure. It's mostly just dance sequences where they take their tops off. All right. Uh, and I, the whole time I'm like, man, that's so weird. Because the most badass click in the Why the Last Man comics domestically are the Amazons. And internationally, it's the Israeli military because they had so many females in their ranks. Uh then you realize at the very end, all right, here we go. This is perfect. So this is a picture from the final episode. Yeah. You can see all the Amazons wearing pink yeah. behind there. Two main characters that you're going to keep the camera now, on. Now, in, in, the t in the TV show, do they, do they chop off a, a, a The chest, main a leader had a, a, a breast removed for some surgical thing, but they don't make, it's not like a point of, uh, uh, it's not a so point it's not of like they're wearing ritual. pink in, in solidarity for breast cancer or anything. We don't really know why they're wearing pink <laughs> okay. until okay. this. They are riding into a town. This is in the final episode, and what ensues from here is a wild west shootout 
between them and a bunch of women who were working in a prison or in a prison. They were prisoners before everything goes crazy and they wind up taking over this town. The only reason they made these women wear pink is so you can tell the difference between one dusty group of women and another dusty group of women while they're doing their Wild West shootout. Pretty smart. I it mean, is the otherwise... only reason why. They took the entire lore of the entire point and just had them all running around in pink for no reason other than that you would be able to tell the difference between one group and another group. Are they trying to do like Handmaid's Tale kind of thing? Is that they're trying to make pink like that kind of thing? It's... Is that they want that to be... Th- it's it's a uh, 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 boy. Do I not think that the writer's room of why the last man is it understands why women would join a biker gang? <laughs> like <laughs> it was it was uh, yes, likely. I mean, the, the, the writing on why the last man makes Handmaid's Tale look like the Sopranos. Like it, it is Ooh. it is next level galaxy brain compared to the drivel that that show was. Why horses? Because, because, uh, actually, you know what? The, if, if, the, if, if there's not refining of gas, uh, diesel well, why, will, why? will stay, but, uh, but, but, but unleaded evaporates. Yeah, but I'm mean, like, I, like, bold take here. Women can do these jobs. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Uh, I, I, I'm not. I haven't watched show. I didn't read the comic. They're making a very. It's one of those like. There's another show like an H show. I won't mention that was you know trying to be very progressive. And if you look at the themes, like, oh no, this is really horrible because like you're you're the person who's supposed to be the smartest person in the world got their intelligence because of this racial yeah. theory, which is not yeah. cool. And the person who saved the day is this person, and like like. Like, are you really looking at the themes here? So, yeah, like, I, I uh, think in in the in the comic, I it was it was more of an aesthetic choice that that they were this kind of elemental element of like you know a, a fanatical uh, uh, reincarnation of of an ideal. Yeah, of, of, of a feminism. Like you know, they they were this this. It was like an know. eco thing. Cool. I just want to know like why. <laughs> I think also it was an element of like they're just kind of you know wh- horse women, <laughs> like they are they are they're just I mean, kind of into al- it. Also, uh, per the tenets of Max Brooks's World War Z, uh, your best vehicle is a bicycle. <laughs> like, sure, but I wouldn't make a TV show where everybody's going around on bicycles. On bikes, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'd be like I, I'm like like. I don't know, like crazy, like if, in my my version of like what's gonna happen, like ah, it's sort of rough and whatever, and it's be like, and it's be like you know, women in cars and everything else, and it's gonna be it, like yeah, it is. half the people are left, but you know, like yeah, I, <laughs> I there there long. really <laughs> is. I mean, I think like a a, a I mean, I, I love that comic. I think it's really great. I would love to see it done well at some point in in another medium. But part of what it fundamentally missed is. If half of the if half of humanity died, regardless of the gender line, you would miss them. This would not be yeah. about like, oh my God, thank God they're gone. I mean, like, there's a lot of it and interesting things that can happen in the world that builds around it. But it's like, it's it's almost the worst story to try to do a a kind of like straight down our modern lens kind of a uh, of, of gender study because you have to take on the gravity of the world that it is that it is you know uh, based upon which is a like dystopian world but more of a world in which it's just you know uh, it's hard it, it, it's it's hard to operate you got to figure out a smaller circles to operate in but like andrew said the the best version of it and then the comic does kind of get to the idea that like oh no things are like normal like yes there's a lot of unrest yes you have some systems that are failing because there's just not enough people to do it so you have to make decisions on which systems you're going to save but it's the show makes it into the walking dead where like everything is wrecked and everything is screwed and and like like everything's falling apart and and everyone's just running around screaming trying to shoot each other and it's like man i i, I i'm i'm with andrew i feel like or, again, some things would be abandoned. You would see a lot of abandoned stuff because the world was built for 
a certain size and now it's half of it. But I don't think that everything would be a total crap show. But yeah, 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 yeah. It'd be different, but yeah. I don't know. My pick what again I, I, is Succession. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, there we go. All right, Succession. It's great. Watch it. Yep. Bryce, did you make a pick? Uh, I, I will double down on Succession. I I think it, that show is very good. Good episode. Okay. I have a dumb pick and a smart. Well, dumb and a maybe smart pick. Dumb pick was I read about this and I had to buy it. Um, but we're, what now, is we're this? looking at uh, we're looking at a device. A type a word or phrase. It says. What does it say? Wiki reader. What? Wikipedia in your pocket. So it's just a, a, it's a just downloaded a Wikipedia copy of Wikipedia. Like ten years ago, this company sold these. Oh, that's and brilliant! What it is there's there's so this funny thing. There was an SD card in here that has Wikipedia on it, right? Now you're like, but Andrew, uh, we, like, what about all the new stuff? Oh, guys, there's a dude on eBay that sells you updated SD <laughs> cards. So I got the, up to 2021. <laughs> so I got like a Blade Runner 24. I mean, everything you know, anything 2021. That's up amazing. To that's saved. awesome. So, uh. They were like two hundred bucks and a hundred. Then they just clo- they sold them off like ten bucks. I paid too much on eBay for it, but I'm I'm fascinated by devices that are smarter than they should be. Like I've got another the, the twenty questions thing, so I'm not recommending to go out and buy this because you know get you know you could just just get Wikipedia on your phone. But the Wiki Reader there was a, I love that concept because the fact that you could put most of that knowledge onto a sixteen gigabyte card. Yeah. Um, the my pick, and it doesn't need to be this one, doesn't mean this at all, and obviously it's self-serving, but is the the new Kindle Paperwhite. Oh, um, oh yeah. I I realized I was in this point where the only books that I was reading were ones that were on audio, which limited that, and also only when I was able to listen to an audio book. So I made this decision, and this may be more information anybody needs, but instead of taking uh, my iPad into the restroom and cruising social media. I just make sure I check my RSS feeds. And then the rest of the day, whenever I have to make a break, I just, I actually got two of these now. So I have one in every room, like I have one in each room where I might be wanting to read. Oh, damn. That's synced. great. Oh. Cause I just, and I found out, you know what, when you have a Kindle readily available with books on there, you read a lot more. Yep. Funny thing. Yep. So, uh, and people are like, oh, like, like I have, I like, I use, I have my iPad Pro here, which I love with my stylus and stuff. And and you could, you know, like, oh, you could read on there. And like, well, yeah, you can. And I can do everything else on right. here too. That's true. Yeah, it's distracting. Which is not a feature, but I don't want it to be. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know, I want it. To, I just, I want it. If I'm going to be locked in the smallest room, I don't want an escape other than a book. Mm-hmm. So. The Kindles, they have they come in different many different kinds now. Um, the the one I got was the new Kindle Paperwhite, which has the the backlight display. The the bigger one, this is the twenty. But you can get. Uh, I actually have an Oasis somewhere too. They sent me, but um, there are various pricing. If you want the LCD ones, they're cheaper. But if you want to get the, you can get like an older generation one for eighty bucks, etc. There are different options, but if you're like, you know what, I just want to stick to, you can even get, even even get like a regular sort of tablet and you can download too, like from libraries, like your different library systems will have, uh, there's a couple different platforms that let you have freely available books too. You can check out books from your library and use it. So you don't have to keep consuming, which is a big, big tip, you know, libraries, guys, free books. <laughs> you heard it here first. Yeah. Cool so, beans. Oh, my cool. pick is reading. It's Yay! fundamental. So there you go. Uh, it's been after. Cha-ching! There we go. Hey, look at We that. did it! All right, Hell everybody. Yeah. Well, we are... Uh, we're going to go offline here. We'll be back in uh, about two hours with Court Killers. Coming up. Uh, we yeah. got Eck on, right? I believe we've got Eck on. Yeah. On Eckland. Uh, Mr. Hockey, Hockey Eckland. Oh. Hockey Buzz. Yeah. Nice. Uh, alrighty. Well, if we don't see you, have a good rest of your Monday. Bye. Love you. See ya.